Welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. Uh, this one is about 3D printing an ambigram. So an ambigram is text that can look like two different things depending on how you look at it. Two-dimensional ambigrams are pretty popular for things like tattoos because they look cool. You look, turn it one way, it looks like one word, turn it another way, it looks like another word. Uh, you can Google those and see what I'm talking about. For If you Google the word ambigram, you will see that there's uh, text that can be read two different ways. We are making a three-dimensional ambigram. These are the steps that we're going to follow, and this is what our end product is going to look like. You can see we've ch I've changed the view mode here so I can see the front, top, front, and left, and the isometric view all at the same time. Um, this isometric view shows what the object looks like when you hold it in your hand, but if you point it straight at your face, it's going to look like this. Or if you turn it 90 degrees, it's going to look like this. So this is a, a interesting project for when you're trying to understand how orthographic projections work, how intersections work, and also overhangs. Um, we do this project as one of our last projects because there's a lot of overhangs to deal with and we're trying to learn how to deal with those overhangs so that it, we can still print something even as complicated as this. So we're going to make one of these real quick. Um, we're going to try and make this as quick as I can. We, you see we do steps A through D to make one set of text. That shouldn't be too tricky. But then we repeat them again for the other set of text. We're going to do those on two different planes. Then we're going to move them so that they overlap, flex them so they're the same length, and then combine by using common. Uh, other programs call this an intersection, but I wouldn't use the intersect tool in SolidWorks. I think what we actually want is a combine and then just switch to common. So I'm going to try and show you how to do all this. Um, we're kind of abusing this flex, I think, here in order to scale things. This stretching, I'm not sure this is exactly what this is intended to do, but um, it gets our job done for what we're trying to do. So let me show you. We're going to start with a new part, um, and I'm just going to start on the top plane, and I'm going to go to my sketch menu, and I'm going to start by sketching text. So when you sketch text, it can sketch along a curve, and you can type your text here. I'm going to type the text I want. I recommend all caps. I recommend a non-serifed, thick, bold font, because that's going to make for less overhangs. It's also going to make it easier to 3D print. If you use something too spindly, it will not work. But by default, it's going to use the, the document font, which is some default that I don't really understand. Um, and that's not really good enough for what we're doing. So you're going to uncheck Use Document Font, and you're going to click on where it says Font down here. And you've got your list of fonts. They can be hard to go through. I know which go-tos I like. So I like to pick a font that I know has a very bold or even black version. You can also see that by default, it's setting the height in units versus points. You can use either. But I prefer to use this because this will tell me how tall the letters are. It's important to, to remember this number because you're going to need it when you repeat. So you got to think about how big it is. It depends on how long your words are as to what sort of number might be appropriate. So there's what I'm going to use. Now, if I extrude this right now, I'll have five separate pieces, which is not what I want. So I'm going to use this, which is the spread between the letters, and I can just move them closer until they start to touch. If it's a barely touch, then it's going to be that's a weak point where it might break. Like this is no good. Uh, these don't even touch yet. So it depends on the font you're using. Depends on the letters you have. You got to make sure there's overlap. So I'm going to hit the check mark. Once I've got all that, this is text. So I can go back in and I can edit this text right now. But that means I can't do things like get rid of these lines because that wouldn't make any sense. So what I've got to do after I close the font tool is I've got to right click and choose dissolve sketch text. You can only do this if you're inside the sketch. Dissolve sketch text. And what happens now is it turned all those letters from text objects into lines. If you've got curves, you can see it adds a ton of nodes along this path. Uh, then I'm going to go to Trim Entities, and I'm going to just draw my lines across what I want to get rid of. You can see there's some overlap here. I'm not going to worry about that. It usually works out okay, but I can't have little parts sticking on the inside. It does have a tendency to confuse SolidWorks as to what's the inside and the outside, um, but if you force it to, it'll figure it out. I'm not closing this sketch because I'm just going straight into Extrude. So where are we at here? We've sketched it, we've dissolved the text, we've trimmed, now we're extruding. Select the area you want to extrude, help SolidWorks out. And this is the trick. You, so you wrote down how tall these letters were, right? Because this distance right here needs to be taller than that. Because I need to put another set of letters going the opposite way through. So whatever, whatever number you have here needs to be taller. It can be much taller. You can imagine now I can have letters going through that way. Check mark. 
So now I've got one word. I could 3D print this word right now, and it would be kind of cool, but not as cool as if I had a different word going through this direction. So if I look, what plane is that? That looks like that's the top plane. So the front plane is the plane I want to put my next set on. Okay, so I'm going to use the front plane. It's pre-selected, and I'm going to do those steps again, A through D. Um, so I'm going to talk you through it, and we'll see. We're going to go sketch, sketch text. Oh, it didn't seem like I selected my plane. Sorry. Let's try that again. Front plane, sketch text, new text, new word, all caps, uncheck document font, font, set to the same font. You can set it to a different font, I suppose. I would avoid serifs. I would avoid italics. I would choose something thick, use the same height probably. Okay. Compress until they are touching. Check mark. Right click, dissolve sketch text, trim the lines I don't want. If you're having a hard time seeing, you could hide your other thing first, hide your other word. Now I'm ready to extrude. Choose the part I want to extrude. This is real important. Check right here. See where it says merge result? I don't want it stuck on here like this. That's not what I'm after. So I'm going to uncheck that button right there. Okay. So. What I want is I'm going to put these on top of each other and then I'm going to intersect them. But if I do that right now, I'm going to have a problem. Let me show you. So I'm going to go to analysis preparation and I'm going to move copy bodies. I'm going to move this word lab. If you don't have the button, if you have the button here that says uh, translate rotate, you got to push that button so that you can move it back um, so that it overlaps. So a very common mistake that my students will make is that they will take this now and they will just intersect them. So if I do that, if I choose common and I say what's common between this and this, I end up with only the first three letters of steam, but the whole word of lab. So let's undo that. I've got to first make these the same length. So what I can do for that, I'm going to go to the top view here and I'm going to click on the top. If you're not getting straight down, make sure your view is not set to display perspective, unchecked perspective, so you can see it straight down. You can see this one's much shorter than this one, but how much shorter? I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to commands, and I'm going to search for measure, because measure is hard to find. Measure allows me to measure different things by clicking on them. I can also turn on point to point like this, and I can just click on a point, and I can click on another point and it will give me a distance. So this is about 102 millimeters, even though it's at some strange angle there. So what that tells me is, if I want to center this, which is what I'm trying to do right now, I need to move it over 51. So I'm going to choose Move Copy Bodies, I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to type in 51. You could eyeball this, but I find that that does not work very well, 51. So if I do that, you can see the yellow copy, you can kind of hard, see it's hard to see, but if I go like that, you can see that should be pretty centered. Looks a little bit off. We'll see. All right. And now I need to make it so that this stretches to be the length of this. So here's what we're going to do. We've measured and we've moved. It's good to write down that measurement so you can have it. Now I'm going to flex to stretch. So this flex is hard to find too, but if you want to dig around for a tool and maybe you don't know the name of it, you can't search for it, here's what you do. You can go into insert. Most of the tools are here. Some of them are under tools. Um, and you can look for things that you are working with. Like I'm working with a feature, so I'm going to look for features. And then I can look down this list, and there's the one that says flex. Flex doesn't actually say stretch on it, but it does actually stretch it. Because I can bend it, twist it, taper it, or stretch it. I'm going to choose stretch. The green and red trim planes are where I'm stretching in between. So right now they're set to the ends of my words. And so if I push like this, I just stretch out my word. And, oops, I'm sorry. You can see... Ooh, looks like it stretched at an angle. You can see that I'm getting closer to having these lined up. That's interesting that it did an angle. Let's try that again. Let me look at it straight on. So, one more time. We're going to go to flex. This time I'm going to type it in. Because now I know what it's called. Flex. Oh yeah, see my trim planes. See those? See how they're at an angle? That means I'm going to bend at an angle. 
So how do I fix my trim planes? Well, it's guessing what I want for my trim planes. So I can grab this arc here and I can try and straighten it out. I'm not sure why it was at a three and a half degree angle. That was a little bit strange. But there's my trim planes now. Um, and then I'm going to choose stretching. And you can see I'm set to zero. But I can stretch it until it reaches the edge. If I have a little bit out here, this part's going to get lost. Uh, right now I'm going to lose like half of my S though. It didn't quite center the way I wanted it to. Um, so I'm going to just go a little bit more and then I'll re I'll move it one more time. Okay. So check mark and let that flex happen. And then I'm going to move this. So I'm going to go and choose move copy bodies and I'm just going to slide it over. I must have accidentally twisted it when I moved. I can move it up a little bit too. Now, if you don't like how stretched out this word is, you can stretch it the other way too. You just have to switch those those trim planes by rotating them and then stretch that direction too. But I don't mind this. I think I'm ready to make this so that I only leave the part where both parts are there. So here's how I'm going to do that. Analysis preparation tab. Click on combine. I can add these two things together, but that it just doesn't look, it kind of looks sloppy that way. I can subtract one from the other, but that usually leaves a bunch of floating bits. But if I choose common, what that does is if I click on both of these things, what will happen is it will only leave the parts where both of those things are. So that will look like both of those things from those different angles. Check mark. So let's have a look. I'm going to click on view orientation, and you can see if I hover over them that they say different words. Okay. So Steam and Lab. If you would like to 3D print this, you're going to need to figure out the best way to do it so that you have the least number of overhangs. You're going to probably need to build your own supports because if you just print this with printer supports, it will fill it all in and you'll never be able to make it look nice again. Um, so that's why we use this as an example so students have to actually think about where to put things, how to make bridges happen, etc. So I hope you had a good time with this project. If you are one of my students, you should make as many of these as you can because then when you count up the overhangs, you're more likely to be right if you have a whole bunch that you're trying to get right versus if you only take one shot at it. So make a few different ones of these once you get the hang of it. It doesn't take that long. The hard part is going to be figuring out where the overhangs are and figuring out how to fix them. Depending on which letters you choose, it's very different the amount of overhangs you have. So that's why we make a whole bunch of them. All right. Watch my other videos. Watch the next video about how to find the overhangs using SolidWorks.